Hey, welcome to Square Body Stuff. I'm Chad. We've got Cream Puff in the shop today. Uh, he's my 79 short bed C10. And we've also got Zeus in the shop, my shop dog, one of them. He decided to stay in the shop with me and help. Anyways, the issue we're having with Cream Puff is the oil pressure gauge has decided to quit working. We turn the key on, it just stays way past. 80 or way past, I mean, the high pressure. So I'm assuming it's just the sending unit. I've already got a sending unit here. Uh, but we're going to do some diagnosing just to make sure what it is before we actually take the sending unit out. I'll kind of show you a little bit of the diagnosis of it. And hopefully it is the sending unit and I don't have to tear the dash apart. Okay, now I'm going to show you what my gauge is doing. Right now it's showing like 60 with the key off. Uh, after it sits for a little bit, it kind of creeps down for some reason. Uh, don't know why, but that's just the way the magical stuff happens in electricity. I'm not much of an electrician, but I do know enough to get me by or to get me in big trouble. But I will show you what I do know on diagnosing this issue. But let me show you what we've got. The gauge is at 60 PSI. The key's off. It's been off for a few minutes. I'm going to turn the key on and it jumps way past. It should go to zero whenever you turn the key on. And then when I start it up, nothing. So now we'll get underneath the hood and I'll show you where the sending unit is. Uh, this is everything on this truck's in the factory location. It's all the uh, factory stuff. So no aftermarket stuff. This should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if your truck is still factory. Now if you've got anything aftermarket, uh, I'm not going to really go over any of that. So this is all just kind of the factory stuff uh, with the gauge. Now if you just have an idiot light, there will just be a pressure switch. It's a whole different unit. I think I've got one somewhere. I'll try to scrounge it up so I can show you the difference in a descending unit for gauges and just a pressure switch. Alright, on this truck, this will be your oil pressure sending unit. It's kind of a canister. It goes on the back side of your engine, uh, on the driver's side of your distributor, on the, on the back of the block. I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, if you have just the idiot light, uh, the red light that shines if you, if you get low oil pressure, this would be an oil pressure switch. You'll have something similar to this. I can't honestly tell you if this is one out of one of these trucks, uh, and I don't remember if the uh, if the ones in these trucks have got a two two prong plug in or if they're a single prong, uh, I can't remember for sure. So yours may look different. It may just have one plug on it or one prong on it, but this is just your switch. All it does is if your oil pressure gets low, it it drops and makes a contact and turns your light on. All it is is a ground basically. Once the pressure gets low enough, it just lights up your oil pressure or your oil light in your on your dash. And this one runs off of resistance. The higher, the higher the pressure, the more resistance it gets. It makes the gauge go up. Now, if you can see it back there, pointing at it, you can see the single wire coming off that little canister, and that's your oil pressure sending unit. I'll do some testing on it just to make sure before I pull it off and try and get back there uh, that that is the issue. Okay, now I'm going to check the voltage uh, with the key on. We should have uh, around 7.5 to 9 volts, I believe it is. It won't be full battery voltage uh, for your gauges. But yep, there we go, 8.5. A little over 8.5 there. volts, if you can see that. So we got voltage coming to our plug, and that is with the key on. With the key off, we shouldn't have any voltage there. So um, that tells me that everything from inside to here is good because I think the voltage comes through your gauge to the sending unit. Uh, your sending unit is actually kind of your ground. It, it regulates, in a way, how much voltage is going to your ground. So it, it's a resistor, so the more resistance it has, the higher your pressure goes. 
And now we're going to check the resistance on the sending unit that's in there versus the new sending unit. Now to check resistance, uh, which is measured in ohms, and I'm not going to get too technical into it because I don't understand all of it, uh, but you'll have to switch. This little symbol there is your ohm symbol. Uh, I set it at 20,000. And if you put your lease together, it should go to zero. That means there's no resistance. This is there's nothing blocking it. And all resistance is is kind of like a valve or regulator. It it slows down the flow of electricity. So now we'll hook this up to the new one. Alright, so I've got my new sending unit. We'll take our black test lead. To what would be the ground because this grounds through the engine block and I'll put the other test lead on where the plug goes on to and you see we have zero resistance or 0 0.01 which is pretty much open that means it's a pretty well open continuous so you're going to get set or the eight and a half volts from here to uh, to your ground now if that sending unit that's in here is bad, it'll show it'll actually show a higher reading because there'll be more resistance. I'm suspecting that's what we're gonna find. Okay. You'll have to ex excuse the snoring noise. Uh, Zeus is pretty well passed out in the corner there, and you can hear him snoring. So we'll do the same thing on our sending unit that's in the truck. Put the red one on the plug. It should just be able to ground out anywhere. Actually, I'll just ground it out on the housing. Yeah, it's showing. It's showing it's open. There's no. I mean, it's just like it wasn't even plugged in. Something's something's wrong with this sending unit. Uh, you can see there's there's no change in the meter itself. Let me go back to the other one. got resistance so that tells me that the sending unit is bad and we'll get back in there and pull that old one out and put the new one in and we should have a oil pressure gauge that reads right now now there's a uh, the hex on both ends of this I prefer to use the one down low because it's actually connected you know right to the threads uh, if you try to put a wrench on this end of it, you're more than likely going to, you know, maybe spin this on the housing. You won't be able to get it off. Uh, so you want to use it on this end. Just like that. Unthread it. And pull it off. And if you want, I mean, if you just get it broke loose with uh, your 9 16 on the bottom one, then you can go back and use a, a ratchet to uh, take it the rest of the way off or by hand if it gets loose enough. The main thing is just getting it broke loose. I'll put 
thread the new one on and it already comes with some thread sealant. Now if you're removing this, an old one, and putting it back on, if there's nothing wrong with it, you know, say you're rebuilding the motor or whatever, uh, you want to put a little bit of thread tape or something around those threads. You'll end up with an oil leak on the back side of your block. Okay, I've got the sending unit hooked back up underneath the hood. Uh, everything else reconnected, that disconnected, you know. So now let's see what our gauge does uh, when I turn the key on. I see my gauge is already down to zero. The key is off. And it doesn't move when I turn the key on, which is a good thing. It's not supposed to. Let's see if it'll start. Up to about 60, which should be about right. It moves a little bit. So I think we've uh, solved the problem. And we turn the key off, it should drop back down. Turn the key back on. Stays at zero. All right, I think we fixed the sending unit problem on my oil pressure gauge. That way I know I've got oil pressure now. I get a little bit nervous sometimes, even though I know this, this motor's in really good shape. There's no leaks. But still, yeah, to get a little nervous not knowing if I've got oil pressure. It's always a good thing to know if you got it. Well, hopefully this has been informative and helped anybody out with uh, figuring out what's wrong with their oil pressure sending unit or their gauge, why it's not working. Uh, mine's working great now, so in the meantime, check out these videos over here, hit the subscribe button over there, go down in the description below, and I've got some links down there to a uh, playlist on this truck, uh, also Teespring store where you can get my merchandise, check that out, I've got links to a few other things down there, so go check that out, and until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling, and we'll catch you later.